Welcome to At Your Library. I'm your host, Kathleen Clifford. Over the years, the Groton Public Library has been so privileged to partner with our local bookstores, Banksware Books in Mystic, and Savoy Bookshop and Cafe in Westerly on many projects and events. My personal favorite is when Annie Philbrick and Kelsey April stop by to share their recommendations for what to gift this upcoming holiday season. Thank you for joining us, Kelsey. I'm so excited for you to be back. Um, as we know, last year we had the COVID issue, so mm -hmm. we missed this favorite part of the year. So what are you gonna talk about today? Yeah, so thanks for having us, Kathleen. I definitely missed last year. I always look forward to having this conversation with you um, about kids' books. So um, I have a stack of my some of my favorites, some of my favorites from 2020, okay. because there's a lot. Um, so I'm going to start with teen and work my way down to the okay. younger readers. I do the children's and uh, sorry the children's book buying for both Bank Square Books and Savoy. Um, so this is generally what I read, and this is generally what I love to share with people. Perfect. So we'll start uh, YA and work down to the younger readers. So um, the first one on my list is called The Sea of Salt and So Am I by Cassandra Hart. This is a debut YA novel that's set in coastal Maine. Now this is gonna be for a little bit older YA. It does deal with some mature themes, um, such as depression, relationships, um, but it's a beautifully woven story and you can tell that the author really loves her characters and really loves her craft and that it took her a while to formulate and tell this story. So it revolves around these three teenagers who are growing up in coastal Maine their town is sort of slowly crumbling into the sea because of um, environmental concerns and rising um, sea levels, that sort of thing. And so um, the main character, you know, and her best friend have this plan to go off to college together. That plan starts to crumble. The best friend's twin brother, um, you know, trigger warning, does um, attempt suicide in the beginning of this book, so just be careful with that. Um, but it is a very, very delicately handled um, conversation and it is absolutely beautiful. I would classify this, classify this as like a literary YA fiction. There's not a lot of plot, but there's a lot of character development and, and that sort of thing. The next one uh, is The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This is another debut YA novel. This one can be for 12 and up, 13 and up. There's nothing super inappropriate in here, but it is very, very scary. Ooh. So this is dripping in Japanese uh, mythology and lore. And it has to do with um, Shinigami, which are Japanese reapers. And so the main character in this book, Ren, is half British reaper and half Japanese Shinigami and because of that she's not accepted really in either culture because she's she's both and so um, she leaves the British Reaper family that she is raised with and travels to Japan to try to find her mother and along the way she you know discovers adventure um, you know we learn more about Japanese mythology along the way um, and a, there's a little bit of a love interest in here as well but this was this jaw-droppingly good um, definitely don't read this book late at night. I found myself Googling <laughs> Shinigami at one o'clock in the morning, which I would not recommend doing. Um, but this is a very, very good book for kids that are looking for adventure, something a little scary, um, and something that's gonna like just drop you right into a culture. Nice. Keeper of Night, very good. Um, so this one actually, uh, another debut. As you can tell, I read a lot of debuts <laughs> this year. This is Amber McBride's Me Moth. Um, which was just shortlisted for the National Book Award for Young Adults, which I am super, super happy um, that that is the case for this book. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a young adult novel that is um, told in verse, meaning it's one long epic poem. Mm -hmm. And it um, has to do with a character named Moth, whose family dies in a tragic car accident. She's sent to um, rural Virginia to live with her aunt, and her aunt is so grief-stricken that she can, can't really see Moth. And, you know, Moth is dealing with a loss of her own family and feels very disconnected, feels very distant, um, and, you know, is struggling until she meets a boy named Sani on the bus one day. Um, and Sani is Navajo. Um, he was born and raised in New Mexico and was also sent to rural Virginia to sort of, you know, escape the troubles that he had there. Um, and he sees uh, Moth for the first time and they meet on the bus and they decide that they're gonna take a road trip ac across the country to New Mexico and along the way they stop at really important um, historical landmarks in Navajo history and black American history. And there is a, um, a, a point in the book toward the end where the book completely flips upside down and y there's this big reveal moment that again, my jaw just hit the floor. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. I read this in one sitting. I read it on the edge of my seat um, and I would recommend this to really anybody 
um, 12 and up, this would be great. All right, passing playbook. This is the black trans boy joy book that everybody needs in their life. <laughs> um, Spencer Quinn is a um, soccer player at his high school. He's really good at it. Um, he wants to take it to the next level and play in a league, but in order to do that, he has to produce his birth certificate, which in the state of Ohio, you cannot legally change your gender marker on your birth certificate, which is a huge problem. And so Spencer is really nervous that he's gonna be outed because he's passing on his new high school. Nobody knows that he's trans. And um, everybody, you know, and it, it comes out that he's trans and everybody is, in his life reacts accordingly. Like they react the correct way. Um, to this information about Spencer and they all rally behind him and support him um, and in the end he gets to play soccer and he gets the guy so this oh. also has a little bit of romance in it too 12 and up on that one spoiler alert spoiler <laughs> alert well it's a romance so right. you in the end you know you know absolutely um, now we're scaling down into middle grade this is another debut by Jules Machias um, called both can be true this is about a gender fluid young kid um, who his name or their name is Ash they use they, them, she, her, and he, him interchangeably depending on you know, how they're feeling in that moment. Um, when they start school, they're presenting as female. They go by she, her, or she goes by she, her, um, and develops a crush on this boy named Daniel. And Ash is really concerned that when she starts to swing back into being a boy and using he, him pronouns, that Daniel's not gonna like her. And then you also get Daniel's perspective. Um, he inherits this old little dog that he's trying to save. And so this, this little dog that Daniel's trying to save ends up bringing Ash and Daniel together. And again, it's, everything is handled the correct way in this book. Um, everything ends well for Ash. And um, I just, I devoured this book. I read this in like a sitting or two. All right. Um, Garlic and the Vampire. This is also a middle grade graphic novel. This is adorable. It is. Um, and if you have a graphic novel reader in your life, get them this book. It is one of my favorites of the year. I'm going to sort of skip along now because we're running low on time. Kaleidoscope is Brian Selznick's um, newest middle grade. If you know the invention of Hugo Cabaret yes. or Wonderstruck, this is a beautiful, beautiful story. And again, with that classic Brian Selznick originality to it, the way that the story is told is unlike any other story that I've read. Um, and it's also heavily illustrated. All right. El Toro and Friends tag team. This is a young reader that I absolutely <laughs> adore. It's about this bull named El Toro. He's a wrestler. Um, and this book is good for kids who speak English and are learning Spanish or speak Spanish and are learning English. So this is like on the same level as um, Elephant and Piggy. Like if your kids read Elephant and Piggy or any of those like um, paper overboard hard, you know, readers like this. Um, this one's really new. It's by Raul III, who is an amazing, amazing artist. So this is a really good one for that young reader in your life. All right, Greystone Kids. Um, this is the Capybaras by Alfredo Sodergit. This is about a family of capybaras um, that have to relocate and the chickens that are really um, having a hard time accepting the capybaras into oh, their, into their, their home, space. into their space. And so this is about you know, um, accepting others into your space and, and lending a helping hand when you can um, and you know, what happens to people when they have to leave their home and relocate. That's great. It's awesome. So one of my themes this year for my recommendations for kids books is funny and silly and goofy because I feel like kids need that. And so this is Shea Bob. It's about an alligator who really wants to eat the birds that are pecking in the grass nearby. And he's really lazy about it and he wants to eat the birds. And so he decides that he's gonna open up a bird seed restaurant on his mouth, like on his nose. <laughs> And so in the end, he's like, he thinks he's so smart. He's like, oh, I'm going to get these birds. I'm going to eat them. And then in the end, something else may happen. So you have to read it and find Every out. Every year you do that to us. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So the little library, I wanted to bring this one because it's a shout out to librarians and to the kids who frequent libraries. So in this book, um, Jake is a little intimidated by his classmates who check out like a dozen books at a time. They read so many books and Jake kind of doesn't until um, Jake meets a new librarian librarian Beck um, and Beck ends up helping Jake find a book about woodworking because that's what interests Jake and although it is filled with diagrams and charts and pictures it's still reading and so librarian Beck is able to help Jake establish a love of reading um, sort of independent of what his classmates are doing and so it's about you know the ability of librarians the power of libraries to help kids find exactly the right book um, and also you know in the end um, you can see there's a little free library on the cover mm -hmm. here so there's a little bit of that tied in as well. All right, a couple more picture books. Poultry Geist. So this one is hilarious. You, it is kind of a Halloween book, but it's also not. Um, it's about 
when the chicken crosses the road, what happens if the chicken doesn't make it? Oh, goodness. <laughs> and it's, I'll show you a few of the spreads inside. So <laughs> what happened? So it is a little, a little it has that dark sort of macabre-ness to it, um, but it's really fun and really well done. This is very, very silly as well. Last one for the winter season, The Littlest Yak by Lou Frazier. I love this book about little Gertie the yak who is, um, she's smaller than all the other yaks. She's not quite as strong as all the other yaks and she really just wants to be a big strong yak. And so, um, you know, Gertie is, is sort of going through the book trying to prove herself that, you know, she can be a big strong yak and she can do all the things and she's feeling a little self-conscious about it. But there's a moment in the end where Gertie's uh, size and her smallness really um, is, is what is needed in that moment to save the day. And so I really adore this book. I think the illustrations are adorable um, and it is perfect for like snow day type reading because look at all those, look at all those little nice hats and scarves swim. and all the snow and there's little Gertie down there. Nice. Um, so that's The Littlest Yak by Lou Frazier and that is the last book that I have. Oh, well, thank you so much for stopping by. As everybody knows, you can stop by both bookstores, Bank Square and Savoy, and either Kelsey or one of the amazing booksellers will help you find that perfect gift. Mm -hmm. When we come back, Annie Philbrick will join us and talk about adult reading for the holiday season. Stay with us. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in ourselves, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to At Your Library. If you've joined us in the first half, you know that we're doing holiday gift recommendations with our friends from Bank Square Books and Savoy Bookshopping Cafe. Joining us now to talk about more books to purchase this holiday season is Annie Philbrick. Welcome back, Annie. Thank you. It's so thrilled to be back. You. I'm thrilled to be back. So what should we buy for the adults in our life? Well, I have all sorts of things. I have some nonfiction. I have some cookbooks and then some fiction and a gift book. So Excellent. I'm going to start with the cookbooks. Yes. So new this fall is That Sounds So Good by Kala Lali Music. Ooh. She formerly was at Bon Appetit magazine and the, cook, the website. And this is just 100 real life recipes for every day of the week. She had a re, re, uh, cookbook that came out last year, but this is her new one. Simple, but really good you know, to do. Simple is good. And then the next one is Lydia's, Lydia Bastianich, um, a pot, a pan, and a bowl. So these are simple ones. They take one or two pots and maybe a bowl to put together, but they're simple. They're Italian oriented because that's what she cooks, but really diverse, but simple. You don't need to make a big mess out of your kitchen. So there's that one. And then the last one that I brought is Field Notes for Food Adventure by Brad Leone. Brad Leone was also another Bon Appetit employee. Then I was like, okay, I'm bringing the whole <laughs> Bon Appetit office here. Um, he's moved to the area, so he's local, oh, local, and we are actually doing an event with him on Saturday, November 7th, that's starting with a beach cleanup at 9 o'clock in Westerly, and then a book signing. And you can find more information on our website at banksquarebooks.com under Excellent. events. Excellent. But this is, he's, he's sort of a food adventurer. He's, he's out in the wild. He's got squid salad, ramp yogurt all sorts of things so it's great this is just a galley this is an advanced copy for it but it it's coming like November out. 7th yep we'll have a, a event with the bookstore great um for non-fiction i'm i have a few memoirs which i realized that oh, i really those like are my favorite so a fox and i by katherine rabin um this is a uncommon friendship it's a woman who is a biologist sort of ecologist who lives in the forest or went to live in the forest on her own and was realizing really what loneliness is all about. And then this fox kept showing up around four o'clock in the afternoon. 
and she started reading The Little Prince, the book to him, and they be, they had this friendship that, you know, she realized she couldn't like anthropomorphic animals, but he came every day and they read for a bit and he sort of kept, she felt like he was kind of keeping an eye on her as she was wow. living out in the wilderness, but really well written, just a really good book. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't skip Daniel <laughs> Philbrick. No. Um, Travels with George. This is one of Nat's most personal books. He, he follows the George Washington, you know, journeys through the East Coast and the South, but he brought his wife, Melissa, and their dog, and he talks. He's just, it's a very personal, uh, but also his, history book of Nat Philbrick's. Great. Um, another one is called Finding the Mother Tree by Suzanne Samard. Um, this is a story of also a woman who's a forest biologist and discovered in her work that all the trees in the forest are connected. There's usually a mother tree that puts out these microorganisms out towards other trees, so they're all living within this whole ecosystem. And she grew up in the logging world of British Columbia, so she ends up confronting a lot of the loggers who want to go in and just do clear cutting, which actually destroys all this relationship between the trees. So it's part memoir, part science, but fascinating story about nature. Um, another memoir is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. She's also the Japanese breakfast indie pop star. Oh, yes. Um, her mother died of cancer. This is sort of a memoir following that, but it's also a lot about Korean culture, Korean food. If you like Korean food at all, like Kelsey and I do quite a bit. I'm a huge Korean food. This player. is a great <laughs> book to just discover some more of that, but it's also a very touching book between a mother and a daughter. Um, the last one quickly is Invisible Child by Andrea Elliott. She wrote a um, series of essays in New York Times about a homeless family in New York City, and this story f sort of follows the story of Dasani as a young child and growing up and what it's like to live with homelessness, poverty, and inequality in New York City. Wow. It's, a, it's a stunning, uh, easily to read, but an amazing story. And then one of my favorite gift books of all to give is The Gift from the Sea by Ann Moore Lindbergh. This book was written in 1955. We have both soft cover and hard covers. It's always in the store, and it's just a great gift to someone. It's written by a woman in the 50s. It feels like it's just current and timeless, but very good gift memoir about what it is to be a woman oh. and just living life, some in solitude. And anyway, but it's very good gift book. Um, the first book that Wallace Stegner ever wrote, ever wrote was Remembering Laughter. This was out of print for a long time. It's a story of a couple in sort of the Midwest. Um, he turns to drink, her sister arrives, and the husband and the sister sort of start this deep friendship. And you're out in the Midwest, sort of in the Dust Bowl, but really well written. Um, he put this into a contest when he was an English professor at the University of Utah and won the contest and sort of launched his writing career. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite books this fall is Lauren Groff, who wrote Matrix. She's the author of about five different book novels and short stories. This is set in the 13th, 12th century, 12th, 13th century of a woman goes from France and is sent away to a nunnery in England and becomes this amazing, strong woman figure um, in England. And if you want to read about strong women in the 12th century, although it also feels like it's almost like time within this nunnery monastery, um, Lauren actually visited a monastery and lived with the nuns for a little bit of time wow. to know what it was like. But fascinating story of women and history in the 12th century. Um, it's a novel. It's not, not, not fiction. And the last one I want to talk about is Damnation Spring by H. Ash Davidson. This is a story of logging families in Northern California and Southern Oregon. Um, bumps up against use of herbicides. It's a family drama. Um, but you get to know these people and the logging industry, which is incredibly dangerous, plus sort of juxtaposition of the natural world of the redwoods in Northern California. Um, her debut novel, absolutely fantastic. I love the cover. Um, so those are my suggestions for gift books for Excellent. the fall and the holiday. Well, I love the fact that both you and Kelsey brought um, new books, new authors, new books, new right. words. Because we know everybody needs a chance, and this is a great way for our readers to, yeah. to see what's out yeah. there. Yeah, and the bookstore is a great place to do discovery and do, you know learn about more some of those some more of those titles. But you know, Kels and I brought it in just to sort of share that with more of your patrons and also out there with the general community. And so, let me ask: if people still don't know what to buy, could buy a gift card. 
You can buy a gift card, any denomination at the, at the bookstore, both bookstores. We also have a small bookstore that we started up in um, New London called Title IX, which is in the little stone building next to the Guard Theater. Um, gift cards, um, you can visit the website and join events. You can order from the website. Um, we've got that figured out during COVID. We, our business on the website just soared, and so we've got that nailed down. Great. So we that can, was my next big question. Yep. So if you want to buy for somebody that's out of town. Yep, we do. We do shipping, um, you know, delivery if needed. Um, we've learned how to do all of that. And, yeah, Wonderful. so the website, banksquarebooks.com, and that's good. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming again this year. This, like I said, is always my, my oh, it's my favorite. My favorite. Kelsey and I have a no great time. No offense to anybody else I interview, but this, this is my favorite. Yeah. No, Kelsey and I also look. We missed it a lot last year, so we really look forward to it this year. So we're happy to do it. Well, thank you for watching at your library. If you have any questions, you can call the library or the bookstore directly. This has been at your library. Thanks for checking in.